Hi everyone, and it's time to discover another hidden city. I'm Linda Beccaro, and I'm here with managing editor of AM New York, Rolando Pujol. Always great to see you. I love learning more about New York, and today we're in the Bronx. Indeed, we're in the Grand Concourse at 161st Street, and when people think of the Grand Concourse, one of the things that often comes to mind is Yankee Stadium. And here we are, the house that George built, right down the street right there. The old one was in that uh, empty area over there, which will become a park. Uh, and across the street, the county courthouse building, uh, which of course was made famous uh, in books like Vampire and Vanities, in the movies, and of course in shots from Yankee Stadium. Yes, that's right, and I've covered many of court cases there. Exactly. It's now a, a sort of a county building. Exactly, that's correct. And tell me a little bit about the ups and downs of, of this. Well, yeah, this neighborhood has gone through, through a lot over the years. Uh, it was uh, really begun in 1909. Um, it's called the Grand Concourse. It was this initially thought of as a speedway between Manhattan um, and, and the Bronx to the what were woods up here in, in country estates. And, uh, the visionary Louis Reese, who thought about it, imagined as this great concourse here, the great speedway with villas. Well, the villas never really came, but the apartment houses did come, as you can see, and that's what makes this place so special. Yeah, we're going to see some of those in incredible. a little bit. Very, very wide streets, uh, beautiful apartment buildings. Uh, it is just a remarkable place to live. And what about this wonderful statue right here in what is now Joyce Kilmer Park? That's right. This is the Lorelei Fountain. It was uh, made to honor the poet Heinrich Heine. It ended up here, uh, brought here by a group of German Americans. It was installed July 8th, 1899. A hundred years later, it was restored, and it had to be restored because it was it fell into horrible shape. It was vandalized, graffiti, decapitated. It was a real mess. Um, and when it became a mess, it sort of reflected what was happening to the neighborhood. Uh, South Bronx really got hit really hard by the tough times that hit a lot of cities in the 60s and 70s. Uh, the Grand Concourse suffered a great deal too, but interesting fact, it did survive. Not a single building on the Grand Concourse burned, even though many around them were, as right. Howard Coast yeah, often reminded us. Absolutely. That's right. And across the way, we've got a building which I've been inside there. Sure. The lobby puts you in another city. Oh, the lobby is incredible. And the city that it puts you in is Miami Beach because it's an Art Deco building designed by Emery Roth. It did some great buildings on Central Park West. The Art Deco style predominates in dozens of buildings up and down the Grand Concourse. And we're going to take a look as we, we sure head are. across the concourse. Let's do it. Across the street is the Concourse Plaza Hotel. Tell me about that. That's right. Well, this beautiful hotel here opened in 1923, the same year that the original uh, Yankee Stadium opened. And it was a big part of Yankee life. Lots of the players came here for the big parties. This hotel was also a big part of the civic life of the Bronx. Um, you had major political figures come here for rallies. But this was um, sort of the hotel to This be was at. the hotel, absolutely. I mean, it, 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 all families wanted to have mitzvahs here. They wanted to have weddings here. If you had a wedding here, you really had arrived. You really were a family with some clout. Now, it isn't quite as luxurious as it once was, uh, but it makes a very fine home uh, for seniors. Well, let's check out some other Art Deco legacy right here on the concert. Lots of Art Deco on the concourse, lots of other styles as well. Tell me about this building. Exactly. This is the Executive Towers. It went up in the 1960s. It's the last uh, private apartment house that went up in the Grand Concourse before the neighborhood began to decline. And it is just a riot of 1950s and 1960s decorative details. It's one of my favorite buildings here in the Grand Concourse. I mean, look at this. I mean, look at the, uh, the zigzag roof line, the mosaics, uh, the billowing facade, the curved balconies. I mean, this is another building that was just seemingly dumped here straight from Miami Beach. Transplanted, right? Here. Transplanted. And yeah. across the way, we have the Bronx Museum. The Bronx Museum, which is really worth a visit. Uh, it's a lovely museum. It actually has an interesting back story. Uh, it used to be a synagogue, that building, and then it got c converted into a museum, and it sort of speaks to the changes in the neighborhood as uh, Jews left in the 1960s, as the neighborhood changed, the synagogues closed, and they, they, they took on new uses. There was an extension to the museum that was done in 2006 by Architectonica, a firm which appropriately hails from Miami. Miami, Beach. lots Miami. of Miami in here. And exactly. now, next we're going to check out a really unusual home. Yes, I'm exactly. I'm looking at this one. Exactly, an interesting place. Well, we were on 165th, now we're on 166th, and the concourse, great mural. We're going to find out a little more about that later, but tell me about the big house behind us. Well, that's the Andrew Friedman home, a millionaire uh, who had a very curious uh, plan for what to do with his money. He was very concerned about the, uh, the plight of 
folks who have been, just like him, very, very rich, who had fallen at hard times. So what he decided to do was build a home for former rich folks, where they could sort of retire and be treated to all the luxuries that they used to be accustomed to. And tell me about this wonderful mural here. This is by Tats Crew? Tats Crew, the, the, the famous graffiti muralists. And it celebrates uh, some of the icons of the Grand Concourse, some of the things that you can see if you continue your walk uh, up the street. It was uh, done in 2009, part of the 100th anniversary celebration of the Grand Concourse. And as you can see, some of the icons that you'll see up and down the street here, uh, one is, here's Edgar Allan Poe and his uh, nice little cottage. He spent his last years here in a little cottage, which is up by uh, Kingsbridge Road in Poe Park. And he lived there with his wife. He moved there with her, Virginia, because she had fallen ill. And the thought was, bring her to the countryside. This was the country. And uh, she unfortunately did not make it. And he spent his, his last years there. It was a rather sad end for Edgar Allan Poe. But the house is still there, and it can be visited. And it's one of the, the charming aspects of the Grand Concourse. Well, it's a sad end for me, because I know we can keep going on. But lots of other great oh, architecture. Oh, there's so right? much great stuff up here. You just keep walking up and, and keep exploring as far as you can go. Right across the street is the great fish building, so named because of the beautiful mosaic of uh, aquatic life that you can see right by the front door and if you can sneak into the lobby too it's well worth a visit. Rolando Pujo, always great to be with you and discover more of the hidden city. Thank you so much. And Thanks Linda. We'll check out more of the conquest on our own. Yeah why not.